To get started in an exam, we'll go ahead and press the patient key, and here we have our patient information. The ID is automatically assigned, and to understand how that is assigned, you have your year, month, day, and then like the 001 will be, that says the first patient of that day. So when I go to another patient, if I click new patient, it'll go to 002 and so on. Enter the name here and any of the information you need. Then you're gonna select the study. So right now I'm doing vascular. And an important thing to do, if you are sending this via DICOM, it's important to add a study description here because this is what will show up on the DICOM server as to what the study type is. Just by, because you select it here and, and click vascular and enter information, it's not going to show up on the DICOM server uh, as to what type of study it is. So if your radiologist requires that, that's where you're going to want to enter that to make sure that the study goes across. When you enter all the information, I'll just type in testing. And you can go ahead and do it without a patient name, although obviously you would want to do that. So we'll click OK, and we're ready to scan. It goes to the default setting, which is the carotid on this machine. So I'm going to go ahead. I can select from here by pressing that probe button, the various presets that are there. If I want to scroll down to see everything that's available, I can go here. These can also be preset in the system. You can add or remove, and as shown in the first movie, you can save your own custom preset that would show up here. And you can also, uh, when we get to the system setup, you'll, you'll see that you can add, remove, and then move them up and down, or set a particular one as the default. So I'll just click on carotid again. Just a single click, and it goes right to that carotid exam. So when we want to start scanning, we've selected our preset, and a lot of the times the first thing you'll go to is your gain, where you can just twist this here and increase or decrease your gain. You'll see your gain value up here. We also have automatic image optimization. Just by pushing that down, it will try and optimize your image based on what it sees. X contrast, you can also see here. It's going to be hard to see on the video, but as you click through, it changes how that image will look overall. FHI will turn on or off your harmonic imaging, and you'll see that reflected in the frequency. Right now it says 10 megahertz. If I hit FHI, it has H12, which means it's going to harmonic frequency at 12 megahertz. And that is the center frequency. Um, so it says 12, but it is probably imaging, you know, between like 9 and, and 15 or 10 and 15. When they show that frequency, it is the middle frequency, not the maximum frequency, which you'll see on some systems, it'll show you the maximum frequency or it will actually show you the range. We did discuss compound imaging on and off, and you can see how that affects the image going to something grainy or not. Compound uses multiple lines of sight instead of just perpendicular. It'll show it's using lines of sight from this way and that to help clean up the image. And you can see it has quite a difference on adding and removing artifact from the image. Speckle reduction also helps the image as well, clean it up. Q image is just yet another way to optimize your image. You can set it at zero or go up, and you'll, if you're looking at it, it shows how it can soften or make your image grainier. Persistence is your frame averaging. So as you turn it up, it'll make the image look slower, but it also smooths out the image by averaging the frames together. And rejection, just another image optimization. Going back to dynamic range, you can see this can have a dramatic effect on the image. As I go down, it's a darker, more high contrast image. And as I go up, it's going to show, you, show me more shades of gray. So it's going to be a smoother overall image, but your edge enhancement may not be the same. So the presets are pretty good here, but as far as if you're trying to optimize your image to the best, dynamic range, I'd start with the frequency. Uh, also get your focal number and your focal position. By reducing the focal numbers, you will increase your frame rate and get a better image in this exact spot here. So I can do that and then twist it and adjust my focal position as well. Compound imaging also makes a big difference, but you can also play with the auto image optimization. I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, there's not a lot of systems where the image optimization works extremely well, but it's always worth a shot uh, instead of having to play with a lot of different functions. Uh, you can also check the edge enhancement feature here, and that often helps sharpen up the image or smooth it out. Smooth is also going to change how the overall tissue will look. 
and gamma, you'll see that this can kind of make it darker or, or very or a lot brighter. Sharpening the edges quite a bit or smoothing them out. So you'll see whenever you optimize an image, a lot of these things appear to do the same things, but it's just different ways of the machine achieving it. There are different technologies that will affect the image quality by using different software algorithms to either enhance edges or remove speckle in the image. It's going down again, I'm going to click down. The scan width, you can use that to increase your frame rate. So we went straight up to 86 by decreasing the scan width. I'm going to click down. Trapezoidal mode will give you a real quick show you what that looks like. Turn it on and it gives me a wider image down there. 2D steer. I showed this in the first video, but this will actually show you what it does. It has a fairly dramatic effect on the image, so if you're trying to get a certain type of image, you can, you can use that to kind of give, if you're looking for a certain type of tissue or trying to see around something, that's a good way to go about using that technology. And we showed the biopsy in the super needle in the first video, but I will address the super needle again. This line here shows where, where the needle should be aimed. So your needle should be coming in and being perpendicular to this line. You don't want to go along the line like you would in a biopsy. You would come straight across here and make it perpendicular and you'd see the needle, it has a dramatic effect on how bright that needle is. Uh, with that super needle off, it's often dark and you can only see the needle tip. But when you go ahead and use that super needle, it will show you a much brighter image. And let's go to the menu here and I'm going to turn this, this off here. I'm going to click exit to get out of that menu. Now up along the top we're going to go through some comments and things like that. Now these aren't the most convenient location for those so you can assign these buttons here to do various functions so you don't have to reach up there for your most commonly used things like such as body marker or annotation. But for this purposes we have our body marker. Click here to get our arrow and we can twist here to change the position of the arrow and then we'll click enter for that arrow to appear. And so when I scroll over it, it's got this arrow, so I can click enter again and move it. And I can spin it and click enter. Get rid of that. I'm just gonna hit clear. And then I'll click arrow again to get out of that. Comments work the same way. I can just start typing and a library will appear based on what it thinks I'm doing. Okay, I'm clear that. And again, I can click on that same thing. I can come here and click and move it wherever I want. And then clear to get rid of that comment. Press comment again. This is also another way to get to your biopsy line. Instead of going through that utility menu, I'll turn that off. Now we have our the dual screen. I'm going to go ahead and click it. And I'll get the image on the left, press it again to get the image on the right, and I can just go back and forth here to switch between the live images. And when I'm ready to make a measurement, I can hit freeze and then save that image by pressing the save button, and it will show up in that thumbnail down there. And I'll get to seeing those in just a moment. Same thing works for quad screen. If I want to go back, first of all, the full screen, I can click this here on freeze. Click that and it's going to take me back to the full screen. And the quad screen works the same way. Just keep pressing and you're going to go on. Volume buttons will only work in Doppler where you actually have sound, but that's where you're going to change that. To save images, there's a few ways of doing this. First, you can freeze and click save here. Click this to save a cine loop. You'll see that it's writing. So that's what's called retro saving. So if I have a live image and I press freeze and I click this cine loop, it's going to save the last 54 frames or however many frames I've saved. I can also do what's called prospective. So I can be in a live image, I can save a single image and it's going to save whatever was right there on screen. And then I can also press this cine loop and then it saved whatever I was looking at on that screen. So if I press this down, the color will change to show that it's doing. It's going to show 
whatever I'm looking at right now, it froze and it saved those 133 frames. And that can be preset to a certain number of seconds as to how the uh, prospective saving is done. I'll show that real quick. Um, you hit this wrench icon and we'll get into depth of these menus later in a different movie. But if I hit this wrench icon, I can hear, I can save real time saving either seconds or frames. So I can save like 256 frames or a number of seconds. And then the same thing here. What do I want to save the last 10 seconds, five seconds or number of frames? So this is real time for prospective and retrospective here for after freezing. And this is specifically for Cine Loop review. We'll get into all of these in a later video about the setup, but this is an important thing to note when you're saving images. If you want to save a custom preset, let's say we made those changes to the persistence and we wanted a different frequency and dynamic range where we optimized our image and we're real happy with it. Say I want it to go to 18 megahertz each time. I showed that we can press, we freeze, press menu and it goes to that utility screen. I'm going to hit utility and here I can save by clicking save as and it says copy of carotid. I can type in my own name. I'll just type in copy to and I'll click OK and it's saved so now when I go to this probe screen I can scroll down and my new preset is right there so I can click on that and it's automatically going to save it's automatically going to save every change I made so that is now a default and I don't have to keep going back and, and making new changes to it and really optimize my workflow now, if we want to adjust where that preset is, we'll get into this later, but again, just to show you real quick, we can go to our exam modes here, and we can set our default. We can add or remove various ones. Say if I don't want thyroid, I can go ahead and click that, and it removes from this menu here, which will be the menu I see when I press that exam key. See how copy to the one I created is at the very bottom. I can move that all the way up to the top and also set it as the default. So now that is my default. Now if I mess that up and I want to get rid of it, I can go to this exam mode config, scroll down, get rid of this. I can also change the comments library for that preset so it automatically can go to whatever I'd like body markers and what measurement do I want to appear. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and delete that because I don't want that setting. Yes, I want to delete it and it's gone. So no longer is that going to appear on anymore. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm back into imaging mode and next we'll get into Doppler and M mode imaging.